welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside more guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I'm playing Legacy, and at the request of Patreon subscriber Lucas, I am playing Bug, Death Shadow, Stifle Knot. These are two strategies, both the Death Shadow Tempo deck and the Phyrexian Dreadnought Tempo deck, that overlap in somewhat meaningful ways. I wouldn't call it chocolate and peanut butter, but it's pretty close. Basically, the idea here is disrupt your opponent. We've got Thoughtseize, Stifle, Daze, and Wasteland, and Force of Will to push our opponent just off balance enough to kill them with some gigantic idiot. We have the 12-12 all the time Phyrexian Dreadnought, and we have the 12-12 sometimes Death Shadow. This deck can even make it a 13-13 without dying. We'll talk about that in a second. It's a pair of gigantic creatures, tons of cheap or free interaction, and where this deck dovetails nicely is that Stifle, which is primarily in the deck to make Phyrexian Dreadnought possible. The combo here, of course, if you haven't seen it before, is one mana 12-12. When it enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless you sacrifice any number of creatures with total power 12 or greater. You Stifle that trigger, and for two mana and two cards, you get a 12-12 Trample. Pretty good deal. Stifle can also hit fetch lands, which keep your opponent off balance and make them unable to play the game. If you're stifling fetch lands, that makes wasteland more potent. When your opponent does stick a land, you could just kill it. And while you're beating up on lands with stifle and wasteland, that keeps days relevant longer and longer as the game goes long. Generally, days stops being helpful around turn four, turn five. People can just leave an extra mana up but not if they don't have any mana. And if you're attacking their mana while presenting enormous threats ahead of schedule, they're not going to have the luxury to take their time making land drops to play around days. So this is among the most potent days decks that I've seen in a long time. Wasteland and days, obviously just a core combo in the top tier of legacy, but Stifle goes in and out of favor. I've said a lot about this card. I don't think it's good. Generally speaking, like Stifle is one of these cards. It's kind of like Surgical Extraction, where a new player or someone new to the format finds this card, and they're like, wait, I can just Stifle a fetch land, and then my opponent doesn't get a land? One blue Stone Rain? How can anyone beat this? Then you realize that Legacy players know about Stifle, and they play around it, and they think about it a little bit. You might get a Game 1 blowout, but then they're going to dance around it afterwards. This doesn't just go in any deck, but the decks it does go in are the ones where you can use it proactively as well as defensively. Either shove your Dreadnought into play or stuff their fetch land. Stifle's unlikely to be rotting in your hand in a deck like this, and these are the type of decks I like it for. The other way to get dressed, Dreadnought into play is with Dress Down. If Dreadnought does not have any abilities, then it does not have the ability requiring you to sacrifice 12 power worth of things. Dress Down also cantrips, so rather than one for two yourself to get your Dreadnought into play, you two for one, and then also get a Dreadnought into play. Just insane value there. Dressdown can also put any number of Dreadnoughts into play in a turn where Stifle, you have to go one for one per Dreadnought. Dressdown is the card I'm excited about here. Dressdown also just massive tool against... <laughs> massive tool. Massive tool against Urza's Saga decks. It just kills all the Urza Sagas. Great against Thassa's Oracle decks. It removes the Thassa's Oracle ability when it comes into play. So Cephalid Breakfast, Doomsday, you're on notice. Pretty effective Fog against decks like Death and Taxes or Elves. I love a dress down. If you've watched any of my content, you know that's true. But then we get another surprise layer where Death Shadows minus X minus X is an ability. So if you dress down when you have a Death Shadow in play, it's a 13-13, regardless of what your life total is. And that can be good for some surprise burst damage or a in-combat blowout. And not content to just add Phyrexian Dreadnought to a Death Shadow shell, Lucas has also splashed green for Berserk. 
Cast a spell only before combat damage. Target creature gains trample and gets plus X plus O until under turn, where X is its power. At the beginning of the next end step, destroy that creature if it attacked this turn. Let me tell you about giving a 12 power creature plus X plus O, where X is its power. That adds up to 24, and the starting life total in Magic the Gathering is 20. So, Berserk on a Phyrexian Dreadnought, or a mid-sized Death Shadow, or a dressed down Death Shadow, will add up to over 20 points of trample, and pretty easy to one-shot people with Berserk in this deck. Important to note with Dress Down, the adding and losing of abilities happens in the same layer, so it will be timestamp, whichever one happened most recently is true. If you Berserk a creature and then cast Dress Down, it will not have trample. If you Dress Down and then Berserk a creature, it will have trample. Just note for that. The green is also being used for a pair of Abrupt Decays in the sideboard. And Lucas's original list, this is the only change I made from the 75 that was sent to me, is this Court of Cunning was a Sylvan library. And I don't love playing one Sylvan library in any deck. That card is not good in a lot of matchups, and it's a bad top deck. And there are situations where even if you resolve it, you can't necessarily get a ton of value out of it. A Death Shadow mitigates the life loss because you are actually paying out something. But in the sort of grindy, maybe creatureless, empty board kind of matchups where Sylvan Library would be something we want, Court of Cunning does a lot of the same work and can actually kill our opponent without ever playing a creature. It's pretty common as control decks in Legacy to board out all your Force of Wills in matchups like this one and just try to win with Planeswalkers or Swords of Plowshares or removal spells beat the board rather than beat the stack. And Court of Cunning, it just comes from a totally different angle than your creatures do. My surface level critique of this deck is is two Berserks and two Abrupt Decays worth splashing green for? Because there will be hands in this 18 land deck where we have Tropical Island Thoughtseize. Like our one land is Tropical Island and our hand contains Thoughtseize. Or maybe they wasteland our watery grave, leaving us a breeding pool, and we can't snuff out anymore. This is not a free splash. The legacy fetch land dual land mana base makes it pretty approachable. I did have the thought in my head of maybe there should be one green land and one additional watery grave. We just run one tropical island to get these berserks off when we want them. But then if you just draw your tropical island and get wastelanded, you can never cast berserk. I'm going to leave the two in. If I'm suspicious of anything in this deck, though, it's do we need a green splash at all? And do we need two lands that don't cast our more important spells to facilitate it? We'll just keep an eye on that. But obviously, Lucas wants to do some Berserk stuff, and that's what we're here to do. I'm leaving it all in. Let's go do this thing. This is Salt Eye Shadow Knot. I'm on the draw in round one. I am going to keep this hand. Despite being a tempo deck, we are a deck that our threats don't really come down on turn one, so you don't need a threat in your opening hand because you're not going to be able to cast it from your opening hand anyway. Not excited about this Berserk, but having Force, some extra blue cards kicking around, some Stifles, especially if my opponent's going to mull to five and pass a fetch land into my open mana. Oh yeah, give it to me. And I'm going to play Verdant Catacombs and just throw off the scent that I'm even a blue deck. This might be a Stifle Scoop game. Those are things that happen. Oh god, it's the mirror. Okay. I'm not going to fetch. Because if I fetch, they can fetch and they can sneak their fetch land through my wall of stifles. And now I have a threat. Look at this hand just coming together. Right now I am feeling a non-zero amount of stress about clicking through my opponent's fetch land. I play a lot of magic online. I don't make a lot of misclicks anymore, but I'm trying to just Look through my stuff, play a little fast, not waste any time on my clock, and then accidentally clicking through this. It's on my mind. I'm not going to do it, though. My fingers are nowhere near the pass priority button. They're passing. They could be a stifle deck. They could be a daze deck. I'm going to fetch in the end step. I'm going to try to fire off this brainstorm. Got my underground C. Brainstorm. Oh my god, a wasteland. 
I'm going to put this Berserk and this Snuff Out back. I think their creatures are going to be black. Or, I don't need a third Stifle. Maybe that's the Bridge Too Far. Yeah, they might have Delver or Merktide in their deck. I am going to shuffle these away. I could start reducing my life total, or I could just focus on this Dreadnought for now. I'm going to focus on the Dreadnought for now. The opponent mauled to five, missed a land drop. They're stubbornly refusing to fetch into this stifle, but this wasteland's going to force the action real soon. And then next turn against their zero mana, I can red knot stifle with days backup. Well, wasteland here. You love to see it if you're a bad guy, which I am. Cycling Street Wraith, not going to stifle that. I don't care about it. Two fetch lands. Certainly, I don't have two stifles. Go ahead. Take your run at it. I'll draw for my turn and hope it's a land. But thoughts ease. Let's have a look here. Won't be able to stifle both lands in this situation, but I am holding up days if they want to start a volley of interaction right now. Horse pitching Delver. Okay. Well, I'm not going to fight over that. Yeah, they've been stingy with these uh, fetch lands. Finally got one. They have another one in play, though. If they stick Merktide here, I can snuff it. If they're going for Death Shadows, I'll just make a bigger creature than them. Another Dreadnought, okay. Phyrexian Dreadnought, Stifle. I have Force and Daze to protect this thing. They are a snuff out deck, which is concerning because my creature is non-black. Snuff out. I think I have to pitch the Daze here. They're just not likely to tap out again, and Brainstorm can at least set a second round up. No! Alright, suddenly in trouble. Felt so good this whole game. But now they're Death Shadow, which is a creature with its own stats, is lining up extremely well against my Dreadnought that needs help to get set up. Brainstorm first. Ace Dress Down, okay. Um, this Dress Down can get the Dreadnought through. In the near future, I can spend a turn jumping with my shadow, or, and I'm playing my shadow here, that's for sure. So if they hit me with their 6 6, mine will become an 8 8, and they're dead on the backswing. So I have shadow advantage here, term that I just invented. Days of Merktide Regent. And so I will put that in the graveyard, please. Cool. And now they cannot attack or they die. Now I have an interesting thing. No, it's not that interesting. I was about to say I could attack with my shadow, see if they just want to take two and die to dress down. But if they just block, then they have a shadow and I don't. Delver. I'm going to end step dress down. Which draws snuff out. It resolves. Bummer. If our last card in hand was Daze, which it was not before that thought. Okay, if I snuff out and Thoughtseize, I know their hand is a land, but it makes a 6-6-8-8 six, six, eight, eight. that kills both their creatures and they have to block. Oh, uh, I'm just going to use Thoughtseize as Fatal Push here. It's a forced block now. Out of here, they have Water a Grave in their hand. Please draw a blank. Oh no, draw Merktide region. They drew Death Shadow, which is the same size as mine. Fetch land off the top. Put him in the abyss again. Uh, snuff out. Oh, this this works. Okay. Check it out. Phyrexian Dreadnought. Snuff it out. I'm at one. I'm not going to sacrifice my brand new 12-12. Okay, I'm at one. You're top decking. Fatal push stabilizes. Nothing else really does it here. Please don't stabilize, just die. Ponder, oh no. The shuffle. Okay, cool. That game was tighter than it looked like it was going to be based on the first four or five turns that we played, but then my uh, eight cards on the draw to their five cards on the play ended up being pretty good. Abrupt Decay does seem like a major advantage here. Is that even true? They have Fatal Push and I don't. I don't know that I'm actually doing much better than them with my uncounterable removal spell that costs two mana. 
versus their one mana removal spells. I don't love Force of Will here. It's not a Pyroblast mir Mirror, uh, so Force of Will is a little better than it is when your opponent's bringing in Pyros. I'm going to shave one of the Berserks. That is a cool card, but this matchup is about who has the last threat, not necessarily about cheesing through a ton of damage at once. They have Delvers as well. My snuff outs, they have Delvers and Murktides. Snuff outs are still alive. Court of Cunning will win a game on an empty board, but I have no guarantee that the board will ever be empty. I think I'd rather just play to the, the damage game. I need one more cut here. I'm looking at either a third force or the second Berserk. Oh, in this matchup with both of us getting low life totals and and my medium-sized shadow could kill them through a big shadow. I actually think Berserk is kind of cool. They played around days extremely well. I do have the Wasteland Stifle thing going on. But I'm going to leave a Force in over a daze. Okay, my hand is good. I'll keep it. Touching immediately. You know, I'm a Stifle deck now. And they have a Ponder. Chose to Shuffle. Okay, I am flush with lands at this point. Because I have the Dreadnought angle and they don't, I kind of like going easy on my life total early on. Last game I stabilized at five or at one. Like I had five, and if I had fetch shocked that first land, it wouldn't have worked. Okay, so they boarded in life from below, which is really interesting because this is a card I considered in that Court of Cunning slot over Sylvan Library, and they have it. So I'm not going to win any sort of resource denial game. On that level, I think it's this brainstorm. I mean, I don't really want to get Thoughtseized or snuffed out either. But brainstorm does so much, especially working with Life from Below. I expect to get Thoughtseized this turn. So they're fetching. Are we just paying out Loam right now while we still can? Yeah, that's a reasonable take. I'm not going to fight over this. It makes days worse, but they're holding that Thoughtseize snuff out. Sick. Now I can thought seize their thought seize. Painful truths. Jeez, they have a really good sideboard plan. Um, I don't really want them to draw three cards, but they're not going to because I have days. I'm going to take their thought seize because I can stifle them off of painful truths or daze it if they draw uh, down in dirty land. Which they did not do. Now they're playing around stifle and not casting their. Game breaking spell. Fine with all of that. Stifle this thing. And now, if they tap out for painful truths, I can daze their snuff out. Now, I'm just going to daze the painful truths. Or if they pass the turn, I don't have to worry about it. I'm going to get a watery grave here. I would love to see a fluster storm. Oh my god, that's so much better. All right, I will overload their snuff out. And I drew fluster storm too. Shut the front door. Those are basically the best two cards that could ever be drawn in this situation. Okay, so they have snuff out that they would have to spend four mana to keep through this fluster storm. Then I can just daze on the other side of it if I want to. Or if I need to. We're just serving up nuts, hot and ready. Oh, they have a second one. That's fine. Disappointing, but glad that I drew the payoff. Ponder really don't want to get a removal spell cast against me this turn. They've used two stuff outs. We've seen at least one fatal push in their deck. A shadow. Okay. And painful truths is the last card in their hand, and I know that. Shadow can get pretty big here. 9-9. Nine, nine. Be 12-12 and just trade. Oh, the full salt time mirror. Very interesting. Okay, removal spell at the top. Bummer. I mean, I probably just have to take this trade here while I have it. They can't cast this Painful Truths in their hand because they'll lose life to do it. There's one Berserk in my deck. I think it's... They can't cast Fetchlands anymore, or play Fetchlands anymore. If they draw a Shadow right away, I'm in trouble, but I think I have the overall advantage here. So many of the cards in these decks use life as a resource. Or they could draw a Shadow immediately and put me to dead on board. Okay, so I have to dress down in my end step to try to get something going. This gives 
Red not a potential draw. Botsy is not helpful. I am dead on the board. I can fetch to maximize. Yeah, I am going to fetch here to maximize my good draws. Generally like holding on to those for brainstorms, but don't have that much time. All right, deck. Abrupt decay. Abrupt decay. Uh, we're dead. All right. GG. This is what I was talking about with the Berserk. The last big idiot wins. It's not even about cheesing for damage, though I guess Berserk would have also won that game on a cheese for damage line. Who knows what's going on anymore. On the play now. Uh, my opponent has shown me that they have life from the loam and access to green mana. What do I do with that information? Do I like Court of Cunning? Can't play it when you're behind, but if I get behind in this matchup, I'm already losing. Days is much better on the play, and I'm going to get my forces out completely. And shoving this on the play is, is pretty tempting. I think I actually am just off Berserk. Sorry, Berserk. You'll have your moment. But I don't think the Death Shadow Mirror is that moment. Okay, I can keep this one. I'm going to ponder off of Breed Pool on turn one. I just can't afford to get my Underground Sea Wastelanded. Press down two more lands that do not shuffle. And I'll draw two of these, then I can brainstorm through the rest of them. I do like having access to Dress Down. Yeah, I'll hold on to this. This insulates against... Wasteland as well, because I have my first three land drops lined up. After, even if I get Wastelanded here, I have three more lands I can play. Delver. Okay. Defeat that creature. 16, and then to 12. Okay. I can defeat Delver and play a Death Shadow here. We're in there. I have a Protection spell, and I can do the Blitz for 13 line. I'm interested. I'm just going to fluster this. Get out of here. I think they have shown me that their deck is better at grinding and just beating up on their cantrips early seems reasonable. And they just missed a land drop and passed. Okay, some options here include Dress Down, Bash You, or just cast Brainstorm and see what happens. I'm going to Brainstorm. The Court is here. I like that card a lot. I was hoping for a little more out of this turn. I'm going to put back a land and brainstorm then i'm going to cast ponder and see if i can come up with a fetch land or some extra damage oh wow dreadnoughts here there is a lot going on on the top of my deck right now i'm kind of into it missing land drops over there this is an insane time to resolve court of cunning i'm gonna attack first see if they want to mess with me i'm gonna leave up breeding pool as if I have Veil of Summer in my deck, a card that is not beatable in this mirror, which I'm not playing. And as one does in a blue mirror, conceded when they couldn't answer Court of Cunning. Hitting that Brainstorm, who knows if the land was the third card down. We've seen two drops ups already without it, so good chance they might have just been Brainstorm locked, but still just smelling blood in the water, taking it out when I'm ahead. Sweet, on to the next one. You come here to level up at Magic. To level up as a software engineer, check out the new YouTube series Dev Better, hosted by the founder of 7 Factor Software and Magic player, Jeremy Duvall. 7 Factor's small teams of high-performing engineers build custom mobile apps, APIs, and highly scalable systems for Fortune 500 companies and ambitious startups with great ideas. If you'd like to hire 7 Factor, or maybe join their team, contact them through their website at 7factor.io. And don't forget to subscribe to 7 Factor's YouTube for every episode of Dev Better. On the draw for round two, unfortunately, mono colorless hand. All in this. Okay. Even a single colored source I'm in for. I will keep this, and the decision here is send Dreadnought to the bottom, because I can't currently enable it, or send Wasteland to the bottom. Because there is some world where I just like waste you, waste you, daze your spell, and we're chilling. I think I am going to send the Dreadnought. This is where I immediately top deck dress down, but that's okay. I've made my choice. Bummer. I hate wasting a Delver deck after they play Delver, but drawing Death Shadow makes it less bad, because if I can keep them off playing the game and they just poke me for three a turn, my Shadow will eventually win this thing. Okay, missed their land drop. They kept a one lander. We got them with the Wasteland. 
I'm going to fetch and thought seize them. I'm going to get underground C. So if they have wasteland now, I'm going to feel bad. Maybe I should ponder. Now I'm going to thought seize. Yeah, I thought they would actually play it if they had it, and they did not. So I'm going to take the other Delver. Some concern about being bolted out here, but they'll need to draw lands to do that. I can wasteland an island out from under them so they won't daze me. If Delver flips, it means they're missing a land drop, so kind of win-win there. Breeding pool. Would they daze a ponder here? If they fetch basic island, if I put wasteland out face up, they fetch basic island. I can also just go to 13, cast ponder, and then cast shadow with daze protection, but they can pay one for the daze. That doesn't actually work. I think I'm going to play out Wasteland and cast Ponder, play around their days. Another land, Brainstorm, Ponder. I always like Brainstorm and Ponder. I would prefer a removal spell, though. And we're in that spot that if they just top deck Wasteland now, I can't cast Death Shadow until because I see both of my green sources here. I think I will hold on to the Ponder on top. Silver flipped, revealing a second daze. They'll probably shuffle that away, but if they do that, they have to either get an island or not have red mana for the game. They get island. Shuffled away the daze, so they still only have one of those. We can resolve shadow this turn. Oh, a second island? Are you kidding me? You play two of these? That's gross. But still, that's uh, two burn spells rotting in your hand. I'm gonna shock in breeding pool. And just challenge them to a race here. Ponder. Two more wastelands. All right, we can shuffle this now. Shuffle. Oh, Berserk's here. Cool thing about uh, Force of Will versus Lightning Bolt here. Even if they win the fight over Force, I'm still at nine. And my shadow's bigger than Lightning Bolt. Still attacking. They're like, bet. Okay, we're going to get into an old-fashioned slugfest where I think Berserk is actually going to crack this thing open. If I thought sees I go to 5, they attack me to 2. Still force if they draw the appropriate mana source. Yeah, thought sees, let's go. These days, Chain Lightning, Lightning Bolt, Murktide. I think it is pretty safely Murktide region here. They're dead next turn, thanks to the Berserk. And they would need two red sources to cast the two cards in their hand, which they currently have zero. Okay, here we are. I can pay for two dazes. If they draw Force of Will, they win. Wasteland is not Force of Will. Taking off my black source, oh no. What will I do now? Berserk. Okay, we got a Berserk win. It's on the books. Berserk you. Okay, I will pay for these dazes. <laughs> we did it. Another tempo-ish mirror. Not quite as mirrory as the last mirror, but still the same sort of small ball, wasteland, daze, poking back and forth kind of thing. I don't know about Court of Cunning in this one because they're a deck that actually has a ton of genuine one-drops, where my one-drops are more three and four drops. Doesn't work quite the same as an actual mirror. I think Force of Will's got to go completely against the Pyro Blast deck. They didn't see Dreadnought that game, so I have that going for me. These is still fine. I have to find some cuts somewhere here. Snuff Out's great. Rest Down is what my deck is for. I still like Thoughtseize. Maybe I could go a little skinnier on Stifle, a little skinnier on Daze. I guess I'm going down another Stifle, and... Alright. Yeah, Stifles and Dazes. Just the situational cards in exchange for cards that are just generically better. This is what I'm doing. I will keep this hand, though it's not exactly what I want to be doing. Happy to see Shadow, though. Like we saw last game, you can be way behind on the clock, and Shadow's actually better in that situation. Island Ponder from the opponent. Smartly playing around my wasteland. But like we saw last game, the thing that I said when I thought seized them is if they fetch basic island, they won't be able to cast these lightning bolts. And then I won the game at five life with two lightning bolts in their hand. 
didn't need another land there, but them not starting on a threat gives me some time to brainstorm. Wonder if I need to respect Blood Moon or like Price of Progress. It's weird that they have so many basic lands in their deck. I'm just going for a brainstorm ponder classic setup here. Okay, maybe I'm going brainstorm thoughtsies. Put back wasteland, one of the wastelands and one of the fetch lands. So they would have to daze whatever I have here. They're going to interact with it. I think they're more likely to fight over a thoughtsies than a ponder. Minor misstep, sure. All right, that was a card they had. Next turn is lining up to be pretty good. Unless I get Blood Moon right now. Counter balance. I don't like that either, but I do have Abrupt Decay in my deck. All right, Thoughtseize, show me what's what. Or do I start with Brainstorm? They don't know their top card right now. I'm starting with Brainstorm. Please don't hit. We're safe to cast one drops for the turn. It's Dreadnought. Seems like a massive liability at this point. And I do like the lands. Stifle doesn't seem great. Put that away, and then I'm going to Thought Seize them. Have to get Watery Grave now. That's okay. I got a hand with Shadow in it. I would like to start reducing my life total. See what my opponent's up to over here. They didn't daze me. Oh, Jesus, they do a Blood Moon. Well, when your opponent gives you information, you should use it. I guess I'm taking this Blood Moon because I'm literally dead to it. But I'm also dead to every other card in their hand. Tough crowd. Got their Merc Tide. I need a Snuff Out now. Shadow. That does not help me necessarily. I can start with a Thought Seize. And if this resolves, then maybe Shadow can get through. Another Merc Tide. Let's see if they missed up this or just let it happen. Okay, I was hoping for a missed up. Because I'm going to waste them off red anyway. Oh wait, I needed that to resolve for Shadow to work. Never mind. Still going to waste them off red, though. And now I'm in a lot of trouble. One, two, three, four, five. They're pretty far from their second Murktide and can't cast the two spells in their hand. I would like to draw Snuff Out and Abrupt Decay in that order. Oh, didn't attack. Howard? Oh, or we could just draw Abrupt Decay right now. Um, there's no reason to cast it at this particular moment. That's fuel for their Murktide. And I'm not casting any spells anyway. Ponder. I'm going to let that happen. If they find a Volcanic Island here, that's actually rough. Because then they can play Battle and immediately attack it. And then I have to abrupticate the Battle instead of the Counterbalance, which is what I want to be doing. They could also just play Murktide here and just put me in check. Yeah, that's probably the correct play. Okay, so I'm going to 6 off this attack. And basically can't do anything ever again. Uh, I guess I will cast the Abrupt Decay. Basically the choice is, do I show them that I'm playing Abrupt Decay? Or play two extremely thin outs here? Brainstorm. Those are not my outs. Alright, we're done. Okay, uh, Counterbalance is in their deck. Stifle is better on the play, Daze is better on the play. I do need my Abrupt Decays, absolutely. I need my Brazen Borrowers. The Hydro Blast. Oh, that kills Blood Moon. Ugh, Blood Moon. This is an outrage. I'm going to cut the Berserks. I think I need more cheap interaction than I need a big flourish at the end. And we already won a game with Berserk this match. Count it. They are Dragon Delver as well. I don't actually know the rules of battles. Like, is when the defense counters are gone, cast this a trigger? Can I stifle the cast of a battle, or does it just, like, become cast, which is not a thing I can stifle? I do not know. Yeah, I think Court of Cunning. Oh, shit, I just hit Submit with 62 cards in my deck. <laughs> uh, and it's already loading. Whoops. Okay, 62 card special. What could go wrong? I'll keep this hand with Stifle and Daze in it. And see if I can get a cheese. I don't think they've seen Stifle or Dreadnought yet. Bobble. Bobbling. Yourself. Okay, so they do have a fetch land. Let's see it. Crack it. Crack it, you coward. They like their top card. But I like that they shoved a fetch land into play. 
Now they're incentivized to fetch a basic because I'm holding Wasteland. Here we go. It's party time, and I have days to back this up. My ground C and stifle. Dang. Okay, they have another one. That's fine. I can daze whatever this play is if I'm worried about it. Yeah, I'll save my days on that one. My next priority is to find my next colored mana source. I have Ponder and Brainstorm. I can see a lot of cards this turn. Not Shuffle. Jealous. Okay, always had it. Easy game. I do have Thoughtseize in my deck, so I'll Brainstorm now, see if I want to do anything proactively. More Stifles. I'll keep one of those. And Ace is really good if I have Wasteland and two Stifles. But I'd rather be able to answer things in play. Okay, I'm going to go down to one days, leave this Ponder on top. Oh, I should have put Wasteland back. What am I doing? Whoops. Yeah, Stifle Wasteland were, were the cards I should have put back there. And kept the Ponder in my hand. I, I don't have to Stifle that. Okay, I get to draw the Ponder. The wheels have not come off. Watery Grave and cast Ponder. We still have a land drop, which these cards don't help with. A Shuffle. Oh, got there. Alrighty. Let's go around again. Two dazes, two wastelands, and another stifle versus this opponent with one land. Okay, I'm going to stifle this one. I do need this black source now. I don't have another one lined up. Okay, deck. I'm ready for... Not that. All right. Uh, seven cards in hand and spinning their wheels on lands. I'm going to cast Days for tapping mana on this one. I have so many of these, it's time to start casting them. Volcanic Island. And they just passed into combat. I will wasteland their Volcanic Island right now, where they can't really float mana and do anything with it. A mid-combat brainstorm on your own turn after using your land drop. I'm not too sad about that. That's gone. I did that in combat because I didn't want them to change their mind. Second main and just jam a Murktide. I'm going to daze this, hold my snuff out for Murktide Regent. Okay, let's try to get something going here. This would be a great spot for Court of Cunning. Thoughtseize, your five-card hand. What's going on over here? Oh, that's worth a Force of Will. Worst pitching force. All right, daze this too. I've gotten paid off of all three of these dazes, and it's turn six of the game. Take this Merc Dead Regent. I am not worried about daze from them. Uh, their hand is now as bad as mine, maybe worse. There's the Tarn. Oh god. Well, if they drew Merc Tide, I have it covered, so mostly fine. Honor Balance would be an annoying thing to shove right now. They were just playing around. Stifle. I could hold this watery grave and just play around wasteland, make sure I can cast my threat when I draw it. I'm gonna do that. Silver. Multiple answers to that ready. A shadow. Decent borrower. Okay. I'm gonna play watery grave tapped. And I'm gonna pass the turn. If Delver reveals a spell, I can get some value here. Snuff this out before they draw. Now a 10, another Delver. Death Shadow. Death Shadow. This is where being traditional Death Shadow would be a lot better than the, the build I'm on. Because Dreadnought, now that I've dressed down, it's a little better. But Dreadnought was actively bad there. Where Murktide Regent would be an insane win windmill slam. Which is what would be in that slot if I wasn't playing dress down stuff. Delver did not flip. Volcanic Island. And I take one from this. I'm going to Wasteland them first. See if they fire off a bolt or something. I'm going to snuff this out. I have Brazen Borrower that can clear a Merc Tide. And if I bounce Delver, they just replay it. It's not even good. Now I am back under their Daze. But not if I draw one of my good 1-drops. Any land is solid. There we go. Get in there, big fella. Just under the Daze. Land, don't care about multiple dress downs. That's cool. I can fire one off in their end step, and they can choose to either you know burn off their days or buy. 
And if they don't know about the interaction, maybe they just die. Or they just concede and we did it. Nice. Out controlling the Delver deck with my slightly bigger tempo deck. On to the next one. Remain undefeated. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks, and groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. I'm on the play for round three. Have this interactive Thoughtseize Brainstorm Wasteland hand into it. This is a hand that's much better on the play than it is the draw, but I would also keep it on the draw for the record. Really hoping for a combo matchup because I am set up for that. Hoping I'm not in a Wasteland mirror because I'm not really set up for that. My goodness. Uh, wasteland confirmed. And you're on some nonsense Stompy deck. Okay. Taking Timeless Dragon feels like a spew, but also they will cycle that for a planes and get off the ground somewhere. I might genuinely be able to keep them off double white for long enough. Yeah, I guess I'll take Timeless Dragon and, uh, oh, yikes. Horrible, awful, ugly hand. And there's the Wasteland, no surprise there. You're a fetch land, that's kind of cool. I'll play that. And maybe this will incentivize them to develop their Ancient Tomb for a turn, then I can waste that. I still have another Wasteland I have to dance around. Oh, there it is. Not dancing around that one. I can waste their waste and then fetch when they waste my fetch. And that seems fine, but I would rather do that when I still have a land drop up. They could also waste my waste now. Check this out. I'm going to Wasteland itself. Which is a legal magic play. Bang. That'll show you. Okay, cool. We were playing chicken around wastelands. They're out of known wastelands. I still have a secret wasteland. They have an ancient tomb that they were protecting with their wasteland. I have force of will for their first play. They have these two chrome boxen. Oh, a third wasteland. Okie dokie. Or we could keep doing this. I'll play another wasteland. They didn't use this one yet. They might need it to cast a 4 or 5 drop this turn. There's the tomb. Chrome boxes are starting to arrive. There's Lauren of the Third Path exiled. Recruiter of the Guard. This is what my Force of Will has been waiting for. I don't know what this is going to get, and I don't care. Now I have the choice of wasting their Wasteland and getting a source of mana. Play the game on. Or I can waste their tomb. They can waste me and nobody has any mana. I'm going to draw for my turn. Oh, that's exciting. I'm going to wasteland their ancient tomb. Because now I can stifle their wasteland. I can also stifle the eternal eyes on timeless dragon. Which is their next big threat that I know about. Because the eternalized card is black. And I can't snuff it out. Arrakis. See if I can walk them into a, a stifle in the end step. A chrome box that I haven't seen yet. This is different art than that one. At least I think. Maybe there's just a spread of different arts in the deck. Oh, obviously, this is a different one. Uh, there's the Timeless Dragon. I'm going to get Underground Sea and stifle this. That's their big move here. Now I need to draw a land or brainstorm into one. Not there. Brainstorm. Get rid of this Berserk. Hold on to this Stifle for dear life. That shot gets me to 13. Not quite there. I'm going to put one of the Shadows on top. And play my other land. If they play an Initiative creature, I could Stifle the Initiative. If they Wasteland me, I could Stifle that. Oh, they have another Timeless Dragon. Disappointing. But if that thing starts attacking me, that's big shadow energy. Well, I got to my untapped step. 
with that shadow still on top of the deck. I'm going to draw that. And I'm going to stifle this. I kind of want them to have the dragon at this point. That shock gets me to 13, which is not enough to play this card. Versus Saga is also a card in your deck. My god. I have worries. I am going to fetch shock here. Any fetch land gets my shadows into play. There we go. I'll get the breeding pool. And run out my shadows and hope they don't top deck swords to plowshares. Please attack me with Timeless Dragon. We'll die on the backswing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Send it. This deck probably has solitude in it. We've already seen swords to plowshares. We just gotta hope that they're currently empty on those. Okay, fingers crossed. I have a lethal attack here. Oh. Um, if I thought seize, I might lose my lethal attack, so I am just going to attack first. I need them to block shit. Okay, cool. They're doing it. I actually did need them to do this. A4 life to kill the construct, and now you take 22. I don't know about you, but you're taking 22. Got away with that one. That was kind of a weird little chicken game, because if I thought seize them, I can't snuff out, but my attack's not lethal. Unless they make a blocker, if they just say, okay, I'll take 14, and then end step, make the construct, I lose that game. Crazy. We didn't see any initiative creatures, but we can be pretty confident that they have them. Raisin Borrower. I don't hate Court of Cunning here. I could see worlds where we're both just farting around with no stuff. And I'm going to need ways to win the game against their Swords to Plowshare Solitude strategy. Every force has to be in. Days on the draw is a lot worse. Brazen Borrower can impact the board and be a surprise attacker. At least two days is going out. Stifle is great. It has a lot of interactions with their deck. So they're probably... Well, they're probably not a Chalice deck in the main if they have Swords to Plowshares, but they might be a Chalice deck in the sideboard, so I guess I need my Abrupt Decays. Shaving my Days is there. And Berserk seems really risky against the deck that almost certainly has Solitude in it. I'll leave one in, though, because I can see Worlds where it's just blasting through. A blocker and taking the initiative is big. Okay, this is what I'm doing. Don't hate this hand. Keep it. My opponent also kept their hand. Terrifying. Planes go. Sure. Watery Grave. Right, right from the hand. Get to ponder. Berserk Stifle. Land. I don't hate the Stifle, but I can't have Berserk and a fourth land right now. I'm going to shuffle this. Ended up with the fourth land anyway. Should have kept the Stifle. Saga. I have Dress Down at the ready. I also have Wasteland at the ready. I'm gonna cast Ponder. See how things look. Three lands. Nope. Shuffle that. And drew another land anyway. This has gone well so far. Wasteland your saga. Another saga. Okay. We're back where we started. Brainstorm. Oh my god. That's a good card. And two more lands and a thought seize. Good stuff. Keep them coming, deck. This is exactly what I want out of my life. I have enough fetches here that I can. It easy on my life total just in case. I'm gonna get underground seed of thought seize with. The hand is very good at lightning bolting itself. Two touches and a plow. Rackus and tomb. I'm gonna take the plow, I guess. Though touch is just as bad against dreadnought. But it costs more. Or just phasing constructs. I'm playing around stifle. Okay. Never seen that done before, but. I don't play enough Stifle, or against enough Stifle, I guess, to have an opinion on that. Just going to dress down their squad on their turn after they commit the mana. How bad could it be if they search? I'm going to let... Uh, oh, shit. Verdant Catacombs is in play and two of the lands in my hand. I might have just blown it here if they get Needle. I was thinking about what they could do to counter my dress down and forgot about the... Triple Stone Rain that they could get with Needle. All right, Soul Guide Lantern. That's better. Moving my Thoughtseize over there, acting like I'm a deck that uses my graveyard. What do you expect, Merktide Regent? That's a rhetorical question. 
I know exactly what they expect, and the answer is Merktide Regent. Let's clear the squad. Anna drew a snuff out. Rockus. Okay, how about a Death Shadow here? That's what I'm looking for. Dreadnought is pretty bad against such a spirit realm. Dread, uh, dress the other guy. Death Shadow, they have to actually cast it. Yeah, just emergency draw a card with Soul Guide. I would do that too. Another dress down. Let's keep them coming, I guess. There's a thing we can do here that is dress down an initiative creature on arrival, and if they try to flicker it with touch, kill it. Also, hard cast force on this board now. Playing bug control, creatureless bug control. I Ganjo. I had not seen that card. Another snuff out. Well, I have their next several plays answered. Let's see if I can find any plays of my own. The fact that they're not doing anything with their proactive Stompy deck means their hand is full of answers too, and we've seen two of them, and then they have five other cards. And now they're missing land drops. Wasteland, okay. Just gonna float that out there. That covers the next Urza Saga. I'm gonna start fetching at least one of these fetch lands. I was holding onto them because I wasn't sure if I wanted to reduce my life total or not. Because I have this handful of snuff outs. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna fetch tapped. Creatures. Oh god, what is this seven mana spell? Oh, they're casting the uh Amirius call. Sure. Uh, I mean I'm countering this. And I'm gonna fetch the other underground sea. Yep, if you wait around too long, that starts to happen. I'm gonna get a breeding pool tapped here. Leave one fetchable in the deck for hand trips. Corrupt decay. Alright. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They can still do this. I care about her as a saga. Two dress downs in my hand. I don't think so. I'm just gonna pass. I'm gonna hold on to this wasteland. Yeah, I don't really care about a Mirius call with Force of Will in my hand. Yeah, they had another ancient tomb anyway, so I wasn't taking them off that. Hey, we're looking for a threat. Botsies. I'm actually gonna hold on to that for at least one turn here. I would like to be able to Thoughtseize, know exactly what's going on, then play a threat. They have another, oh, this is Chancellor of the Annex. Okay, I can just snuff this out. And I can spend mana to do it. I don't care about this card. A Ganjo. Okay, so they can, oh, they can touch the Spirit Realm on their Chancellor to flicker it if I try to kill it. It's clever. But it's also a touch the Spirit Realm they don't have in their hand anymore. I'll just spend five mana on a snuff out. They want to touch the spirit realm. It's going to cost them two life and a touch the spirit realm. And this card won't be in play for my turn. Yep, that's fine. One down. Picking our way through this thing. Ponder. Let's go. Suddenly a burst of activity. Oh, hello, gentlemen. Okay, I'm going to... Dreadnought, Dreadnought, Brainstorm. Not Shuffle. This is the Thoughtseize I was looking for. Two solitudes and a touch. I can force solitude or dress it down, taking the touch, and then passing the turn. Get their Chancellor, who I have to snuff now. Yeah, I take the less damage for snuffing it. Pay the one. Turn this thing off. In step, dress down. Deploy two. Dreadnoughts, this Urza, this Wasteland I've been holding for this Urza Saga is about to pay off. And step dress down. Two Dreadnoughts coming. I can dress down a Solitude, force the other. Wasteland the Saga. Dreadnought. Dreadnought. Okay, you are dead on board. I have, I know your whole hand, and I can answer your whole hand. Press down trigger. Sad. Sad for one of us, exciting for the other. I get to draw a card. That was my last fetchable. Luckily, the brainstorm's in my hand. Brainstorm is also my blue card for force. Their hand is Chrome Mox Solitude, one mystery card. Uh oh. Dress down, still in play, homie. Slow down. <laughs> yeah, they just elbow tap five mana and then backed it up. Yeah, I'm just going to force the Solitude, and that should be enough. Force of Will pitching the brainstorm. Did we do it? Do you have Swords of Plowshares as your last card in hand? 
Yeah, you do. That makes sense based on the way that you played this turn. And can't stifle lifelink, unfortunately. Not anymore. There was a time when you could. They're going to be at three after blocking here. Or five. All right, yeah, they absorb two of the damage, obviously. That's how combat damage works. They can stifle a touch the spirit realm or an initiative. Uh, their last card in hand is Chrome Mox. We did it. Cool. Just bug control. It's turn 14, and we just won with multiple dreadnoughts after working through two solitudes, two swords to plowshares, two touch the spirit realm. Easy. Keep it rolling. Command Tower Software by Eminence Gaming is perfect for hosting TCG events. It features easy to create event registration for 1v1 and 4 player Swiss structure tournaments. Event management has never been so simple, and it's web based, so there's no download required. Get access for just $5 at eminence.event/slash subscribe. On the play in round four with a nice little Thoughtseize opener. God, I love the card Thoughtseize. This makes me so happy when I get to cast it. I'm usually the blue white player losing to Thoughtseize, and it feels good to be on the other side. I will take a million to look at your hand, please. Okay, we have some. Combo. There's two show and tells over there and an Emrakul. I can try to work my way through the show and tells, which I don't have a second answer to at this moment. And they can turn one it. Oh, yeah. I better take the Emrakul. Whoops. Okay. Well, there's that. If they couldn't turn one the show and tell, I probably would have taken one of the show and tells and then used my ponders to try to work through this because I do have a lot of interaction in my deck, where they draw Grizzlebrand and just shove it. Arn Petal was the line. Another Thoughtseize. We did it. Ponder. Multiple Stifles. Uh, okay. I'm gonna hold on to this Thoughtseize for a minute. If I can either flush out or strand this Brainstorm, that's pretty good for me. Stifling a Emrakul or Grizzlebrand. Emrakul Trigger or Grizzlebrand activation are both exciting. But I think just denying them the ability to play the game in the way that they want to is going to be more effective. So if they have drawn a monster in the last two turns, we know they have City of Traders. A's. Just keeps getting better. Brainstorm, land, land. I would like to hit my land drop, and I'll put the Brainstorm under it. If they don't Brainstorm in response to this, I'm going to take Brainstorm. If they do Brainstorm in response to this, is it? Probably not. There's the brainstorm. They can hide the goods. They can still show and tell next turn, even if this, even if I daze them and force the lotus petal to be used. Gotta hope they miss. Force of will to show and tells. I'll take the show and tell. Start working through those. Hope they didn't find a monster. Scalding tarn. Are cracking it. That shuffles away. I guess they could have City of Traders in their hand. Brainstorm. Let's do good, some good work here. I need a threat, and I would like another answer to a show and tell. Berserk is not it. Tropical Island is not it. Rest down. Could buy me some turn to, to interact. Like, I can kill an Emrakul with Snuff Out if they cast show and tell and I put in Dress Down. Ancient Tomb, their hand is Lotus Petal, Force of Will, Show and Tell, Mystery Card. I'm going to get the Breeding Pool tapped here. Ponder, okay. Find me a Shadow. Find me a Shadow. All right, we found a Shadow. And I'm going to put Brainstorm under it. Okay, now they have to actually start doing stuff, which they have not had to do yet in this game. If they hardcast Force here, I'll daze it. Oh, yes, please do this. It's beautiful. A's picking up Underground Sea. Maybe I pick up Breeding Pool there and get the extra two damage. Yeah, I'm playing like a control player, and that could have been a 5 5 in play and got multiple turns off the clock. That was loose. Volcanic Island, Lotus Petal. Five mana. They have Show and Tell, one unknown in their hand. Okay. Uh, show and Tell is going to resolve, and I hope it's Ember Pool. I'm going to put in Dress Down. Oh, it's a Traxa, which is a black card. Doesn't get to do its thing, but it is still black, unfortunately. This will be a difficult creature to tempo through. I need another Dress Down to punch it. Hey, deck, help me out here. 
knew that was Wasteland. Okay, brainstorm. Let's go dress down. Oh, no. Put back the two snuff outs. They're no longer helping me. So fetch shock leaves me dead on board, whereas I could take a hit from a tracks if I don't shock. But I'm not threatening lethal. I'm not threatening lethal anyway. Okay, I'm just gonna get underground C. Looking for dress down. Found it. This is the Omega beating. Because I also get a dreadnought if they fall for this dress down. Boy. Okay, I think we just won the game with that block. I get a 13-13, you lose Vigilance and Death Touch and Lifelink, and then I also play a 12-12 second main. And you're a show-and-tell deck that needs two cards to function. Blammo, good brainstorm. You're up. Wait, why did... Oh, my shadow died at the end of the turn. Right, it was a... Uh, it was a smaller creature with damage on it. Okay, that makes sense. I would have completely missed that in person. But still, trading off with Atraxa, they're not dead on board, but I do have a 12-12. And they need to thread the needle here. Ponder, that's a pretty good start. They have to put together A plus B. If they cast Sneak Attack right now and float a monster on top, they chose to shuffle. That's good news. I don't know what answers they play to a Resolve Dreadnought in the main deck. Like a Brazen Borrower or what? Oh, they found Sneak Attack? Oh, Ottawa. Shit, that's even worse. Okay, back to the drawing board. Okay, that answers my question. That was a Ponder Shuffle Ottawa. Not bad. I'm going to Wasteland one of the Volcanic Islands. I kind of want to soften them up with Ancient Tomb. Though so this Daze would prefer Ancient Tomb not in play. They have a 12 12 to their 13 life. And they're going to keep drawing Ponders. That's cool. I hope they draw Sneak Attack right now and put it on the stack. Invest in the future. They just die. Supposed to shuffle again. That's Shadow. Okay. Get in there, big fella. This one works. Strug Drago. I have the uh, snuff out my own Dreadnought play for surprise four damage. If I want that. Opponents at nine. If they tap Ancient Tomb this turn, the Dreadnought Snuff line works and kills them. How about Thoughtseize? That's one of the cards I want here. Sick. Pretty happy with uh, Wasteland, though. Because Wasteland puts their important spells back into Day's range. I'm going to take out the Ancient Tomb. Preordain, you got it. Bottom, bottom, the Preordain. Ooh. Uh, so I can just put lethal on the stack now. Oh, dress down also kills them. Yeah, this is fine. I can dress down, put lethal in play, and then play dreadnought, which gets to stay in play, and I can snuff it out if they kill my dress down somehow. Yeah, okay, cool. That's the dovetail we talked about that the deck is built around. That dress down is good with both shadow and dreadnought. Took all four dress downs, but we did beat Sneak and Show in game one. Cluster Storm, Hydro Blast, for sure. Winter Orb is a possibility. I think I like Court of Cunning. You can't mill them out because they have Embercool in their deck. But that is a thing I can put into play to gain all sorts of advantage. Stifle's good. Days, Medium, just not a Berserk matchup. I've been saying that a lot. It's had some cool moments, but a lot of these matchups just aren't about berserking. This deck is going to have moon effects. I want to respect them as much as I can. Brazen Borrower is a threat with Flash. Snuff Out. Snuff Out only kills Emrakul, and only if I dress down. I think my job here is don't let a monster get into play. I'm not going to have good answers to it once they're there anyway. And I guess I shave one days. Being on the draw, just a little worse. Corrupt Decay can hit stuff like the Zubin Shifter or Defense Grid. All right, I'm just going to hope they don't have those. Here's my deck. I'll keep this. It interacts, it cantrips. Started with a Scalding Tarn. If they had put any target for Wasteland into play, I would have gone for it. I was going to drop Bonder. Still holding up days. I get to look for 
or interaction. This is not what I want. Two lands and a dreadnought. Shuffle it. That's exactly what I want. Not going to daze this brainstorm, though it is kind of tempting. Basic island, defense grid. Well, daze defense grid. They would need Simeon Spirit Guide to punish this. And if they do that, it's a Spirit Guide they don't have, and I'm about to wasteland them. And they need three or four mana to function as a magic deck. This direction. Cool. All right. Pitching intuition. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. I can hold on to this Force of Will. But it's not getting better. Um, oh, I could also Wasteland them. And two turns from now, Brazen Borrow the Defense Grid. No, I'm just going to force this. Force Pitching Borrower. Because my plan is to Wasteland them. And then it'll be three more turns of land drops before that force is online. And my deck has Daze, Bluster Storm, Hydroblast. Yeah, I'm just going to cut their ability to play the game out from under them and hope that holds up for a while. I have five cards in hand and no permanence. They have two cards in hand and one basic island. Let's do it. Storm, good start. And a fetch land delivered off of that. I'll take a Hydro Blast. A counter sneak attack. Counters Blood Moon, both of which are cards I am concerned about. Another Brainstorm. And they couldn't shuffle because they fetched before the Brainstorm. Or they didn't draw a land, that's what happened. This land started the turn in play. That's right. I'm going to Brainstorm here. I am a Thoughtseize deck. I have reasons to do this now. And I drew a Thoughtseize. All good stuff. This Death Shadow. So I can fetch Shock. Thoughtseize, that's five. And then shock, that's seven. And I can exactly one one shadow at the end of that. Okay, court of cunning. You're off the table. And I'm gonna get rid of this other brainstorm. That shock, watery grave, thought seize, defense grid, show and tell, force of will. All right, I'll take the show and tell. They can defense grid and make it so they can't counter my death shadow. Deal. They're a land and A and a B away from going off here. And they just turned off their own force of will. All of that is fine with me. Start with Ponder. See if I can do better. Thoughtseize. Do I want Thoughtseize? Do I even need it anymore? I mean, sure. I can do it this turn. It is free. I know they have a spell in their hand to do. And it makes my shadow bigger. I got spiked another show and tell. Got that sniper scope on the Thoughtseizes here. And Fetch Shock, I'm getting in for 6 next turn. And then Dress Down is lethal the following. I can Hydro Blast now through Defense Grid. Because I just keep hitting land drops. This looks good. Oops, click through my damage. Uh, it looked good until I became an idiot. I no longer have lethal. I was trying to think of what they could thread together to actually kill me here. And just missed a bunch of damage. It got a Shuffle now, though. The Breeding Pool. That's my last shock land left. Remember when my plan was to kill them this turn? That was a good plan. I'll just do it next turn. Second shadow. Go. So, we don't need to tell anyone about what just happened. Their hand would have to be land, show and tell, monster. Just runner, runner, runner. Their last three draw steps. And it was not. I got away with that one. And we remain undefeated. This was round four, right? Yeah, we got a trophy match coming. Let's go. For the absolute best Magic the Gathering apparel on the market, check out the link in the video description to coalesceapparel.shop and be sure to use the code BOSTONROLL for 10% off when you check out. I'm on the draw for the final round. I recognize this username. I feel like I've already played against them in this league, which may or may not be true. If this is the white stompy deck again, okay, yeah. I did play against this opponent already. Oh, no, they're on red stompy now. Well, I'm going to force of will this, pitching my brainstorm. Because my plan is to wasteland them, and then we don't play the game. And then Daze is really good after that. Press down, pretty solid. Yeah, MTGO doesn't queue you up against the same, exact same league twice, or the exact same opponent twice in a league, but if your opponent finishes their league and requeues, you can pair into them. Maybe I'm just wrong. But I do feel like this was the white stompy player from earlier. Second dress down, a bunch of lands. Isn't really what I want. I'm going to shuffle it. 
I would like to try to start winning this game. There's Death Shadow. That moves to that end. God, please play a four drop. This is all right. We're never dazing anything again with Fable the Mirror Breaker in the mix. Forcible's a good draw though. Turns that daze on. Ooh. Okay. Uh, maybe we will. Don't shuffle. Snuff out this Goblin Shaman. And I guess I shock in Watery Grave. Because I have Shadow in my hand and Shadow on top. If I can lose one more life somehow, whether it be Force of Will or Dazing and picking up this Watery Grave, we're in business. Discarded Fury, Ancient Tomb. It's terrifying. A Force of Will pitching Daze puts me to 12, which is the correct life total to cast these two Death Shadows and hope against hope they don't have Fury in their hand because they just discarded one. Okay. I feel like one of us is dead this turn cycle. Uh, either they clear these two Death Shadows or they get obliterated by Dress Down. Fable. Okay. They're at 12, so they have to block both of these. And why would they block a 1-1? One, one? That's just silly. Oh, because they are 1-1s one, is the answer. Back with my creatures. Let's hope they respect Street Wraith, but not Dress Down, and they just don't block. They blocked one. That was almost enough. Bang! 26 damage. Nice. Okay, up a game. On the draw against Red Prison. This is terrifying, because we are just ice cold to resolve Blood Moon. There is a crazy line here, which is bring in Torpor Orb. Because Torpor Orb plus Dreadnought all functions under Blood Moon. And Torpor Orb also turns off their initiative creatures. This might not be as crazy as I initially thought it would be. Grayson Bees coming in. Abrupt Decay is coming in. Hydroblast. And I am doing the Torpor Orb thing. Give myself some chance at playing the game. This is, once again, not a Berserk matchup. Say it with me, class. This is not a Berserk matchup. This deck has no fetch lands to stifle. I'm bringing in Torpor Orb, so I have another. I'm going net minus three, not minus the Volf or Dreadnought enablers. I could stifle a Rabble Master token or a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. I don't think that's where this match needs to be, though. I love Snuff Out, love Force of Will, love Dress Down. Thoughtseize on the draw might be medium. Oh, it's probably Daze on the draw. I like my chances to Thoughtseize my opponent. Okay, here we go. Thoughtseize my opponent is online. If they have Blood Moon or Chalice of the Void on turn one, I am deceased. Take my chances. Okay, they're on six. And Mountain Go. Give it to me. I'm going to Thought Seize them with Underground Sea, leaving up Verdant Catacombs for the ability to fetch green later on. Oh, they have three moons. <laughs> We're so dead. Uh, okay. Yeah, this was a, a solid start. Maybe I was supposed to leave up Hydroblast for a turn and try to navigate. That wouldn't have done much. Guess I'll take Ravel Master, though. And now I am drawing, looking for exactly Torpor Orb off the top of my deck. Their hand is three of the same cards, so there's no world where they're going to, like, try to do something clever to play around days. They're just going to shove their card. They went with Blood Moon. This is one that does not attack for damage. I'll take it. Torpor Orb? Not Torpor Orb, but we're going to play it out. Oh, they drew a land. Bummer. Now they can attack me for damage. Torpor Orb? Not quite. Okay, now I'm stoked they drew another land. Now I want them to just draw lands for the rest of the game. They passed. Didn't play the second one. Oh my god! Call the cops. Nice blood, moon. Bag is the moon in your hand. Please don't have a braid. Okay, two mystery cards in their hand. They did not play them last turn. What is it? Like, Iroblast? Why would they not add to their board last turn? Holding up an answer to Hydroblast on Blood Moon. God, I hope their hand is just Magus of the Moon Pyroblast right now. Chalice on one. <laughs> you missed the boat on that one, buddy. Fury. This doesn't kill my thing. Oh, Dress Down. Or Torpor Orb. Right, right, right. 
you get a double strike return boy. That does work. Okay, this is 8, 9, 10. This is not enough to kill my Dreadnought or kill me. Or it's 8, not 10. Okay, so you're dead in two hits, and now I have Force of Will back up against your Hellbent self. Let's go. Chrome Mox. This looks like a trophy, kids, off of the ingenious Torpor Orb versus Blood Moon strategy. Yeah, they're just pushing damage, and they're going to concede. Let's go. And a second Force of Will, just in case this wasn't going to work for some reason. Wow. I am particularly proud of that one. If you can hear me through my voice patting myself on the back, finding that Torpor Orb line was sick and did, in fact, win the match and deliver us to a trophy with Saltai Shadow. Okay, so this deck, I believe I gave it a fair shake with the Green Splash, and I personally would not do that. We did have one Berserk GG moment. And then there were there was like one other spot I can remember where Berserk was my live out to win a game that was otherwise not winnable. But there were also times where two of my three black sources had been wasted and I had to protect the third one or else I was just not casting my threats anymore this game. Which I don't really like. Abrupt Decay did kill a counterbalance in this league, which is exactly what Abrupt Decay is for when you imagine putting that card in your deck, like what permanence would I need to kill with Abrupt Decay? Counterbalance has to be near the top of the list. A classic legacy interaction. But still, I'm not convinced that's better than just like some bounce spell or something different. We also are giving up on him to Tarak as a plan and Tarak Dread Cantor in the sideboard because we have these green lands in our deck. And I I'm not a believer in this green splash, at least not in this form. My opponent's green splash that one round where we saw Painful Truths and Life from the Loam. I am more interested in that, honestly. No offense to Lucas, but if we're going to be splashing green, that's the kind of thing I'm going to be doing with it, not berserking. All that said, though, trophy on the board. Never lost a match. That's what that means. Hard to argue with those results. Lucas, thank you for sharing this deck with me. Everyone else, thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the Patreon and all the sponsors, and I'll see you next time.